Hacks, Gary Bradley here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn a day image into a night image inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to start off with this JPEG file. So this shot looking upwards to the top of the building in here, we have, of course, this day image with the day sky at the top in there. I'm going to show you, first of all, how to quite simply make this look more like a nighttime image. And then after that, I will show you some follow up techniques to make this look a little bit more convincing. So I'm going to show you how to replace the sky, replace the reflections in the windows, and then I'll pick one of those windows to have an internal to it with some lights inside and, and create kind of a glow from inside the building. So first off, the easiest way to achieve this day to night effect is if I go to my adjustments panel and then go to the middle row far right hand side to a color lookup. When I click on that, it will then give me in the properties panel the 3D LUT. It's a drop down menu, click on that. And I would love to say that when you hover over these, it will change the preview of your image, but it doesn't. Nothing will change until you left click on one of the presets in here. So all of these ship with Photoshop. And in our case, I need to left click on night from day. When I do that, it gives this more kind of twilight style image inside of here, mainly because the sky in the image still looks bright and light in there. So if that's what you want to do and make an image look darker and more towards a nighttime image, then that is the way to go. Obviously, this is non permanent, so you can go down to your layers panel. You can hover over the visibility icon down here. You can turn it off. You can turn that back on again for the visibility. But that is how you can achieve that kind of look. But we want to do better than this. So the next step then is to replace the sky with a new one. So I'm going to go to my file menu and then go down the list in here to place linked. So in my folder in here, all these images will be available to download from the show notes. And I have one called moon. So it's just a straightforward JPEG file. Click on place and this will drop it into the canvas. Now it needs to be, of course, towards the top of the image and covering the sky. So if I hold down the space bar to get the hand tool and then just pan down a little bit and just move this up in here. So it's it's roughly in, in, in the kind of the, the best position to start off with. And then I'll click on the tick in there to finish the import process. So if I just pull the layers panel out here so we can see this a little bit more clearly and then just extend this down. What I need to do next then is to just um, create a layer mask to hide the bits that I don't want to see obviously where the building is. So I'm going to hide this layer first of all and then the color lookup as well and then focus on my background layer by left clicking on it. I'm going to zoom in just a touch in here and then I'm going to use a tool that I don't often use, but with experimenting like you do with all images that I tend to found for this one, it worked quite well. And that is from the tools panel coming down here, you have a quick selection tool. So this did a fairly good job for me. So yep, it's quick it ain't necessarily always going to do the most accurate selection tool, but this works for me. So click selection tool, make sure that the mode at the top in there is set to a new selection. And then I will turn on auto enhance in here just to enhance the edge of the selection afterwards. And then from here, well, it's a case of hovering your cursor over some part of that sky, click and hold down the mouse, keep it held down and drag along through here and then down through to the sky and then let go of the mouse. And you'll see there. That last bit was really important, the enhanced selection, because it just pulled the selection area back a little bit. It was going to include some of the, the edges of the top of the building in there, but it needs a little bit of enhancement. So if I just zoom back in here, you might want to just, you know, remove some of these areas from the selection. So I'm going to pick up my uh, polygonal lasso tool here from the tools panel, and then I'm going to make sure the mode is set to uh, subtract from selection mode. Click on that one. And then with the series of left click selections around that region, doesn't need to be too accurate for this because of course the content is dark already around there, space bar to pan. And then come along here and then just remove that bit of the selection coming back around just a series of left clicks in here, back up to the top and then left click just to trim that away. Then. So with that done, I think it's going to be good enough really. So uh, zooming out a little bit, what I then need to do is turn back on my moon layer visibility. And then this is the portion of the image that we're going to have active uh, and visible inside the image. So if I click back on moon with my selection in position, if I go down to the bottom and hover over the square with the circle inside of it, which is of course, add layer mask. When I click on that, the only bit that's left remaining and visible is the portion where uh, I had my selection in place. So this is all good, but I want to tweak this a little bit. So 
You'll notice that between the visibility, the, the thumbnail for the photo and the layer mask is a link. If I click on that link, it will unlink the two. I can then click on the icon for that sky image with the moon inside of there. And now the, the layer mask will stay where it is, but I can then just adjust the position of that sky photo. So with my move tool active, if I just click and drag, I'm going to pull this over to this side in here. Obviously you could be careful not to pull it too far because you'll run out of image. So just want to position the moon somewhere around about this position just here. And then I might want to just scale this down so I can do that as well. Edit free transform. Of course, I'll see the bounding box appear around the, all of the printable artwork in that layer. And then if I just uh, hold down the shift key and then scale it down in size, get a little bit more of the sky and the clouds in there. And I think with that done, I'm happy with that. I'll click on the tick. And then I'll go back to the gap between the photo and the layer mask, click in there and it links them back together again. So if I was to move one now, they both move at the same time. So obviously I don't want to do that, but just to show you that's the difference. So undo move. Um, then what I can do is turn on my color lookup. And it's looking a little bit more convincing now. Um, the big issue that we have now is the fact that we've got all these windows in here which have very clearly some daylight reflections in them. So I need to create a selection of those most prominent windows um, which have those daylight reflections in them and I need to put something in place of those as well. So that would be the second stage. So for this one, I'm just going to change this, uh, the name of this layer from moon. I'm going to call this uh, night sky. And then from here, I need to create my selection. So it's going to hide again those two layers so I can see things nice and clearly. And then I'll zoom into the first window in here, just using the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in there. And then again, I'm going to go back to the polygonal lasso tool because this will allow me to create, first of all, one new selection of this first window in here. The, Obviously, the bit where the glass is, the frames I'm not bothered about. It's really the glass reflections that I need. And then from here, if I just left click and let go of the mouse, go to the next corner, and then with a series of left clicks in here, create this selection. I can then switch the mode up here to add to selection. I can then keep adding those different reflections in there. Now, this is quite tedious work, um, especially if you've got lots of windows in here. So I'm not going to bore you with uh, with all of that um, uh, and having to watch me do this. So I'm going to just cut the video, uh, get to the point where I've added all the other windows in there, and then I'll um, we'll join back up again. And there we go. I have my selection of all of those bright reflections in place, except the one in the middle here. This is going to be the, the kind of the feature window that's going to have an internal in it. So I'm not too bothered about this one at the moment, but I have certainly got all the main light daylight reflections selected here. And again, now this time I'm going to save this selection. So I'm going to go up to the select menu, and then choose save selection. Really handy, and I'm just going to call this uh, Windows, and then click OK. So if anything goes wrong with that selection, I can always load it back up again from the same menu, select, and then choose load selection. So it's always got that stored in this file now. And then I need to import another piece of artwork. So I'm going to go to File, and then choose Place Linked. And this time I'm going to choose Sky. I'm going to click on place. So I need to scale this up now. I'm really only interested in the, the clouds in here. That's the thing I want to use to replace the current windows with. So I'm going to hover my cursor around the edge in here, hold down the shift key, and then just spin that round 45 degrees in there to match the ratio of my image. And then do something I wouldn't normally do, which is to scale this up just enough to cover all those windows. And then over here as well, like so. And then I'll hit the return key on the keyboard. Now, obviously, when you import artwork, you place it, you'll lose your selection. And that's one of the important reasons why I saved that selection. So I've got my replica of my clouds in here that I'm going to use for the reflections of the windows. But I want to get rid of that, that uh, kind of eclipse in there that's in the image. That's, that's no good for me in this case. I just want clouds. So I'm going to have to, you'll notice in here that this is set to a linked uh, layer to the original artwork. Now I'm going to right click on that layer and choose rasterize layer. So that will break the link to the original image, but I'll need to do that just to get rid of the eclipse in here. This is no good to us. So I'm going to go over to my uh, healing and retouching tools down here and then use a spot healing brush tool. Just make sure that the brushes are, yeah, that's fine. It's going to be fine in there. Uh, 250 pixels. And then the typing is content aware. And 
and I then need to make sure I click and hold down the mouse and just drag across that in there, across the middle and get rid of it like so. Um, if you leave some odd spots in there, you can always just click or click and drag just to remove any elements that you don't like in there and it'll just have another go at removing that, but done. We've now got cloudy nighttime sky. So what I can now do is go up to the select menu, go down to load selection and then choose from this file to open up the select selection called windows and then click OK. And again, you'll see my selection appears again with the right layer active in the layers panel for sky. I can then go down here and then click on add layer mask. And there you'll see that obviously this window in the middle has been left. That's going to be internal. But now what we have are these kind of nighttime cloud reflections rather than what we had before. So if I turn the layer visibility off this one, it was like this. Turn this one back on now. We have just the uh, the kind of the nighttime clouds in those windows. So again, it's just helping make it look a little bit more convincing. So um, with that combined, if I turn on the uh, color look up in there, that sets the overall nighttime theme. I've then got the night sky uh, and then we're kind of now better building towards something that looks a little bit more convincing in there. Now, there looks to be a very dark bit of cloud in there. So it's going to zoom in again. I'm going to go to um, this one to be the night sky. Click on link between those. Click back on the thumbnail, switch back to my move tool and just drag and pull that down a touch. Just not quite happy about how dark those clouds are around there. Just want to remove that a little bit. In there. So yeah, that's that's a bit better. Again, all we've got to make sure I go back to the image thumbnail and the layer mask, click between them to link them back together again inside of there. And then I'm going to rename this layer. So I'm going to call this one uh, Windows. And then I am actually going to drag and move this down underneath that day to night adjustment layer again just to help all the colors and everything blend in a little bit better as well the last bit then really is to take one of those internal windows and make it look like there is something inside lit up at night just to give a little bit of a glow and again make it a little bit more realistic so again for this one I need to create another selection so I'm going to zoom in here and again I'll create another selection of this window again I'll speed the video up so you don't have to watch me do this but again I'm going to switch to my uh, polygonal lasso tool Make sure the mode set to new, first of all, and then I'll create my selection around this daytime reflection of the window inside of here. And there we go. That's the selection now done for this window. Again, I'm going to go back up to the select menu down to save selection, call this internal and then click OK to save that one. And again, this time I need to go to select and choose deselect and import my internal shot for the window in here. So I'm going to zoom out touch because this is going to be quite big to start off with. And then I'll go to file, choose place linked, and then pick uh, internal.jpg, click on place. So this is going to be really big. And again, I have to be very careful about the style of image that I chose. From this perspective, looking up into that window, you're not going to see a lot of content, but it's going to be the ceiling and any light fitting. So with this now in place, I will hold down shift and alt just to scale this down in size and get this down to about the sort of size I need to work with for my window in there. So just, just sort of to roughly fit this in place in here for now, press the return key um, to finish importing that. And then I'll zoom in and again now go to select, choose load selection and then choose um, internal, click OK. And again, you'll see my selection appears in place in there. That's the layer that's active and I'll add the layer mask in there like so. So then from here, again, same as before with the sky, I'm going to click on the link to unlink those, click on the image thumbnail, switch to my move tool, and then just position this slightly differently. Again, I can go up to edit, choose free transform, and then just scale this down in size. Don't want this to look too big in here, just to pull this down. So I'm thinking it would probably be in somewhere like the middle of the room, obviously. So want to position it where we're going to see a little bit of the light and then with that done I'll click on the tick in there and again always make sure you go back to the two thumbnails click between them to link them back again in there like so last couple of things then is a glow from this window uh, now to do this I am going to create what's called a stamp layer first of all and that's to create a general glow on the walls on the outside of this building so stamp layer creates a copy of everything that's visible in your layer stack and puts that into a new merged layer. 
Now the keyboard shortcut for this is pretty bizarre. So it's um, on the Mac, it's Command, Alt, Shift and E. And that would be Control, Alt, Shift and E on a PC. You notice now that it's created a new layer that combines everything that's visible in the layer stack. And it's a, it, you won't see anything visibly change in front of your image, but it just has a generic name in there of layer one. So if you double click on that, I'm gonna call that wall glow. I'm then going to right click on that and I'm going to choose convert to smart object because I'm going to add a lighting effect to this that I need to re-edit quite possibly um, uh, to, to get the effect looking right. So I'm going to zoom out and then uh, with that layer active, go up to filter, go down the list to render lighting effects. So then we see the, the default spotlight as it is in here. So this is pretty much what it will look like. Uh, when you load up for the first time. If you've used this effect before, then no doubt it will show you what the previous settings were, but we need to alter this from, from what it looks like at the moment to better suit the image. So we are at the moment using under properties in here. It tells us a spot. Um, I need to make this more circular. So I'm going to hover my cursor over the outer ring of this. This is where the lighting effect finishes essentially. And the inner ring is where the hotspot is, where all the main, the main lighting is, and then it fades as towards the outside. So if I hover over the edge, it'll tell me in a tooltip scale width, I can drag this back in here. Just want to make this more circular. And it's a question of just making this a little bit bigger now, like so. And then hover my cursor over the widgets, little pin in the middle and drag this over the center of the window where we want the glow effect to be. We want to just illuminate some of the walls around the area. I'll then uh, zoom in with the keyboard shortcut of command or control and plus, and then spacebar to uh, pan in here. It will let me. I might have to use the uh, scroll bar in there and just pull that back. And then um, you can uh, increase the intensity of the light if you wish to. So you've got this dial over the center in here. Uh, you can click and hold down the left mouse button. You can drag this around and increase the brightness so you can reduce it in there. Um, or if you prefer to, you can use the controls in the properties panel. So I'm going to go with the controls in there. So uh, in terms of the intensity, you can obviously drag that towards the left to reduce the intensity. I need one in here that I'd worked out to be somewhere in the 70s in there. So just to bump this up a little bit. Just like so. And then in terms of the size of the hotspot, where the main focal point for the light is, the hotspot, the next one down, that one needs to be quite a good deal smaller. So I'm going to reduce that right down to about minus 20. And then we see we get that little nice gradual glow around the outside of the window now appearing. And then in terms of the ambient light, I'm going to reduce that further. So I'm going to set that one to, I'm going to, I'm going to increase ambient light just to bump that up just a touch in there. And that will increase the overall light in the image in there. And then finally, I'm going to go to the color. So I'm going to hover over the color box in there. Click in that one. I'm going to put an RGB in here. This, this looks slightly different, this color editor, because it's a, so known as a HDR color editor, but essentially it works the same way as a regular color picker. You've got your hue in here. You've got your brightness, your saturation of the color and the darkness as well. So for this one, I've got an RGB. So this one I'm going to go for 244. Hit the tab key down to green and then 223. And then the final one for blue, 135. So we get a, a, a very kind of a, a warm uh, glow coming from those walls in there. And uh, with that done, I'll click OK. And then I might just drop the hotspot down a little bit in there just to take that glow away. And then maybe just drop the ambient light a little bit as well. Just want a subtle effect in here. So with that done, I can then go up to the top and click OK. Now, obviously this isn't what we're looking for because we've now darked down the bulk of the image. We only need the soft glow around the outside of the walls from that window. Now, if you take a look at the layers panel, that layer wall glow that we've added that effect to has a layer mask. Now that layer mask is adjacent to the word smart filters. So at the moment it reveals all of that effect because the layer mask is filled with white. White reveals, black conceals in a layer mask. Now, if I've clicked inside of that layer mask, I can alter this. I can go to the properties panel and I can choose invert. And it essentially then colors the layer mask for that filter effect 
and hides the entire effect. Now what I can do is pick up a brush tool and then just very gradually reveal it back in only where we need it. So if I pick up my brush tool by tapping the B key in the keyboard and then just change my brush in here to say soft brush, probably needs to be something like 700 pixels in size, definitely needs to be um, set to a hardness value of 0%. So if you, if you do pick up the soft round brush, the, one of the defaults in there, that should be fine. And then I'll hit the return key. Now, again, the opacity, I don't want to blitz this. I want to work into it. So for this one, about 60%. So that's good for me. Um, and then I need to zoom in and get a closer look at this area. And then I'm going to start from here, making sure, of course, that I'm painting with the right color. I need to make sure that I'm painting with white to reveal. At the moment, it's black as a foreground color. So if I switch those around and now paint with white, click and drag over this region here. I add that soft glow, that warm glow from that window to the walls around the outside. So there we go, folks. That is how you turn a day image to a night image. If you just want something very straightforward, you can probably achieve this in some respects with the color lookup that we started off with at the beginning of this video. But for those extra details, like replacing the reflections in the windows, replacing the sky, adding an internal with a bit of a glow, that can make a bit of a difference as well. If you've enjoyed the video, folks, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're not a subscriber, you want to save time, create great looking artwork, then uh, click on the bell so you'll get a notification every Friday when we post on this channel. And until next time, folks, farewell.